Hi and welcome to the Psyche Podcast where we discuss all things mindset, mental well-being and living your best life. I'm your host Hannah and I'm a mindset and mental well-being coach and founder of Psyche Coaching. Welcome and we hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Psyche Podcast. It has been a bit of a weird week, hasn't it? We're, I guess, settling into a new type of normal. Um, I use normal in air quotes. It's something that I discuss with our guests this week about what is normal. But we're in a very new situation that is unprecedented in our lifetime to have these limits on, on our freedom, I guess, to have, you know, pubs, clubs, gyms, everything, mandated shut. And absolutely, we, you know, we know why and it, and it is sensible to limit the, um, the contact with people to, to try and stop the spread of this, of this virus. But it is a really difficult time. And, and I really just want to say to all our listeners who are maybe having a difficult time, that you are not alone, that there is support available on an emotional mental level as well as some of the new financial support that is available and I think there is a real growing community spirit of people trying to help others and reach out Um, and hopefully we'll start seeing a decrease in some of the the, you know the panic buying and the greed and profiteering that that happens along alongside this so just as a reminder that we have our now growing psyche mental well-being community group on facebook which is somewhere just to sort of touch base and have some peer support and get a little bit of a boost if you are struggling a little bit um it's not a replacement for therapy but it is peer support because that connection is really important we're also running virtual coffee breaks at the moment on a friday morning and evening but that's something that we might expand further um even daily possibly if if people are interested in that and we're also doing a special offer if anyone is really struggling and wants someone to talk to is sort of reassessing their life and their and their goals and and just want someone to listen then we are offering four weeks of free coaching so half hour a week completely free no strings attached again it's not a replacement for therapy but it can be really valuable to have someone just kind of listen and um, and help you gain some clarity and you know we want to help in any way we can and and you know mental well-being is our thing so I think this is a way that we feel that we can offer something to people at this time so if you are really struggling and you really want to connect with people generally check out the Facebook group or one of our virtual coffee breaks and they're set up in the events pages of our psyche page on Facebook or if you want some more sort of one-to-one support then drop us a message on Facebook and we can sort out some sessions with you but I think this week's episode is just so timely for it to come out it's with the amazing Alex and she is just such a positive person like her energy is infectious and I really enjoy chatting to her there's a lot of laughter through the episode um also some emotion so sorry again (laughs) for making Alex emotional but it's just I think Alex's story of having to reassess her dreams and find a new path and how positive she is about using that experience it's just such an important message for people to hear right now that I'm sure there's lots of people who are feeling a little bit lost who have maybe had to close their businesses hopefully temporarily but but who knows so I just think the message and then the feel of this episode is probably what people need to hear right now so I'm so happy to be sharing it with you and if you know anyone that is really struggling to come to terms with what's going on at the moment, please share, obviously, the information about what I've just talked about, the Facebook group, the virtual coffee breaks and the coaching. But also, please do share this episode. We've obviously got this is our 26th episode now. I don't quite know how that's happened. So you can share our back catalogue as well with people and we are going to continue to put out episodes every week as long as I'm well enough to edit which you know I'm socially distancing and hopefully get through it all okay so you know please share it and please think about 
looking after yourself, looking after yourself physically, obviously, but mentally as well. Um, I think we talked about this briefly last week, but possibly having some sense of structure, routine, still getting some movement in your day, however you can, um, and connection. And I know there are lots and lots of things that are popping up on social media companies who are offering things. Um, If you are someone who is now homeschooling your children, there are lots of resources that are available. The one I saw this morning was Audible, making available a lot of children's stories. Actually, to be honest, some that I'm going to listen to as well because it goes right up from the littlest up to teens and young adult stuff. So I think there's lots and lots of stuff available, not just if you're homeschooling, but for individuals. And if you've got any great tips that are helping you at the moment or anything you've seen that you would recommend to people, then we'd love it if you'd share it with us so we can share it with our listeners more widely. So I'm going to hand over to this episode with Alex now, and I really hope that you enjoy it and that you kind of feel... I don't know, inspired or I don't know what the word is, kind of feel more optimistic and um, energized after listening to Alex, because I think that she has got such an infectious, maybe that's not the right word to use at the moment, but it's such um, a powerful energy that I just know that you're going to love hearing from her. So we'll see you again next week. Keep in touch with us on social media and look after yourself physically and mentally and um, have a good week. Bye. Hi, and um, I'm very excited to welcome Alex to the podcast. So Alex, if you could introduce yourself to listeners. Um, my name's, my full name is Alexandra Jenna Olivaria, but please call me Alex. Um, a little bit about myself. I used to be a professional singer, dancer, actress. Unfortunately, I've been diagnosed with quite a lot of debilitating conditions, which means that I therefore couldn't do what I'd trained all my life to do. Um, so now I'm actually writing a book to help other people with chronic conditions, but not just people look at chronic as in you've got to have an illness for it. No, you don't, because everybody suffers something chronic in their life. And that's why my book will be called Everybody Has a Chronic Condition. It's called Life. Mm-hmm. So I'm writing a book to help others, not with chronic conditions, but also to help people understand the meaning that pain doesn't need to be seen to be felt. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about, uh, as much as you want to tell us, because I know it's it's maybe an emotional topic to talk about, about the conditions and and why you had to stop dancing. Sure, voice that makes us emotional, because it's very calming. (laughs) Um, I thought in my career, when my first professional job was when I was seven years old, um, and I did... I was cassetting the Les Miserables production at Sheffield Arena, 15,000 seated. It was awesome, amazing. From then on, I knew, like, that's what my career was. But before that, I was so shy. Like, I remember I used to hang on to my mother's leg. And when I was five, she said to me, look, Alex, you need to start finding friends now. So you need a hobby, because we live on a dual carriageway. Not literally on it, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I could pick either between dancing and horse riding. I actually picked horse riding, but they didn't have any spaces left for me. So then I had to go dancing. Um, everything happens for a reason, eh? Um, so when, when I was five, I started dancing. Um, and obviously, I still did along with the acting and vocal coach when I was there. I see I point next door because it isn't still next door to me now. <laughs> um, so when I was seven, I, I did the Cameron Macintosh production of Lames of Robles. I toured Dublin with them as well in 1999. But then when I was 11, I, I knew I wanted to go to a performing arts school. My mother, my father was never around. So it was all, my mother never, ever pushed me to do anything I didn't want to do. I wanted to go. I really, really did. If I look back now, maybe maybe I'm being a bit too truthful. I wouldn't have gone at that young age, at 11 years old. Um, I definitely wouldn't because you're living your life in a little bubble, if that makes sense. I mean, 364 people in the whole entire school, and that goes from prep up until sixth form. So it's small. I left there when I was in year, the end of year 10 because I started getting really poorly. Um, I had an appendicectomy whilst I was at boarding school. I had Freiburg's disease, which is where your metatarsal kind of... Obviously, metatarsal is um, a circle, I suppose, and it crushes flat and bones disperse. I, w- I worked out in the five years I was there, probably only actually danced two years. 
Okay. Either off dance or poorly. I also got diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome whilst I was at boarding school as well. So when when I left boarding school, I obviously went to the Northern Ballet School then, um, which is another performing arts school, another ballet school. I won um, another scholarship there. And I left after about 18 months. I had to have a major operation on my foot. So I've got a 12-minute scar on my foot. My muscle had grown five times bigger than it should have and was trapping my nerves and tendons. So obviously I had a lot of blood tests done and things because obviously things were, weren't adding up. And I finally, after seeing loads of different consultants, I finally saw one, Dr. Hope. In 2012, she diagnosed me with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And in her words was... You carry on the way you're going, or your life's going to be in a wheelchair soon rather than later, sweetheart. They were the worst words I could have ever heard. Like, that's all I knew. All I knew was to perform, to be on that stage, to be that character in front of everyone, you know. I was in denial. I was deluded. I didn't believe what the doctors were telling me. I thought they were over-exaggerating, to be honest. Only the past 18 months have I finally realised that I am in pain. <laughs> And I've always known that I'm in pain. I always felt it, but you learn to deal with it and you learn to cope with it. So in 2012, I got diagnosed with, with that. Since then, I got diagnosed with like diverticulitis, which you're not meant to have until you're over 40. My kidney is in two. So I've got two urethras on my right side. So it's called a combo duplex. I just look at it as I'm very special, now that I've got three kidneys. <laughs> um, I've got fibromyalgia, I've got lupus, SLD. I got diagnosed with lupus last year. So, cool long story short, when I got diagnosed with EDS, I carried on for a couple of years, I did. And then I couldn't anymore. I really, really, really couldn't. I had a hit and mental breakdown. I ended up in hospital because of it. I'm not going to admit it. If I wouldn't have agreed to go in, there would have section, under the section um, three acts, they would have. Uh, but I agreed to it and I was only in 48 hours. I called 999 on myself. I had a knife to my throat, I didn't want to be here anymore. I really, really didn't. Now, if you ask me a question about them four years, I can't remember. All I remember is going everywhere in my pajamas and my dressing gown. Even if I went to get my nails done, I'd go in my pajamas and my dressing gown. No care in the world type thing, you know. I look back now and it's a total blur. And I'm glad it is, to be honest. Because I've learned to accept and appreciate everything I've got. So I, I gave myself a kick up the bottom. I'll say that because I don't know that I can swear on these. <laughs> <laughs> so I give myself a kick on the bottom. It was actually because I read a book called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Now, thoughts do become things. No, they really, really do. Your thought process really does change the power of the universe. It does. If it wasn't for her book, I don't think I'd be here now. So, Rhonda, if you ever listen to this, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. And I set up an events entertainment company called Totally Enchanted. And I did children's entertainment parties. I learned how to stilt walk, learned how to fire breathe. I went over to Tenerife and places doing singing at weddings. And then last year, um, realization struck in. I was getting really poorly and I felt it, you know. Um, I'd always, they'd always said to me that my, the, is a possibility of me having lupus. They've said that for the past four years. But with lupus, you have a blood test called the an, an ANA, and it's not always positive and it's not always negative. It can totally fluctuate depending on your own antibodies within your body. So mine was always fluctuating, so they can't give you an official diagnosis then. Well, in March, it had been three consecutive that it was positive. So I got diagnosed with SLE. It's crap knowing that I have a life-threatening condition, and if I get a small infection, something bad could happen but I look at it on the positive now I know I now know why I've been pulling and it's got a name and I can help so many people that are dealing with this because what is the point in giving up we've all been put on this planet for a reason to help in some way shape or form you've got to imagine life as a jigsaw puzzle and you've just got to piece them pieces of puzzles together and it's not going to happen like that if only it would. But your heart has got to break to be able to regrow and to build even stronger because why do we all go to the gym? Why do we exercise? To gain muscle, to be stronger and confident. But that's our heart. Our heart is a muscle. So you've got to look at it in that aspect. Our heart is meant to be broken so that it can rebuild and build a lot stronger. I think, I mean, 
don't even know where, where to start with um you know your journey and what and what you've gone through and um you're making me want to cry <laughs> <laughs> but i just think it's it it must have been so difficult for you because you had that and i don't sorry i don't want to make you emotional um it's my yeah, you had your dream and you ha and you had that kind of, you know, identity. And then to have that go. Taken away from me. Yeah. But I just think it's amazing that you've then taken that and then you've almost like found a new purpose and you're using Because that, that obviously wasn't my destiny. That the path that I needed to take in order to find the true me and to fulfill my true destiny in life you know yeah and and i, I just think it's amazing that you that <laughs> you you have that that view of it because i i could imagine it would be so easy just to hold on to that the the kind of negativity and that that it's not fair that it's been taken away and to actually appreciate that 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 wasn't your destiny and that, that there's something else the way you can you know you still have so much to give it's just a, a different thing i think that's just amazing that you have that it up i just have to and just with everyone else that's listening as well just because you've been told that you can't do something doesn't mean you cannot do it there's always other ways around it that you can actually conquer your passion yeah yeah I, it's a <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's okay <laughs> it's nice uh, to see you it is actually nice that the understanding from you you we don't get it a lot yeah. because i totally well normal but then i i don't believe in normal because what is normal normal is what you create to be normality yeah do you know what i am um, there's something i read about uh, the idea of normal and that people who feel like they don't fit in and feel kind of i don't know on the outskirts or less than they kind of want to be normal because they see it as the, as the aim but most people don't want to be normal they want to be extraordinary in some way but there's no such thing as normal no what is normal what is the definition of normal normal is what your own mindset creates to be the normality mm. we're not here to follow the rules we're here to create them absolutely and i just think um i'm, I'm so happy that you're on the podcast to kind of uh, yeah talk about your story and i appreciate it thank you <laughs> But, you know, hopefully for anyone... Even though you made me cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Emotions are good. Emotions are good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think sometimes, and it's quite funny, I was just um, recording a podcast episode a little bit before this, and we were talking about that sometimes there are negative emotions that you have to experience, because if you just try and bury them... Do you need to face your problems head on? Yeah. If you are yourself you're only suffocating yourself and then you start procrastinating then it becomes a vicious circle mm. face head on straight away i know it's easier said than done but believe me the amount of years i've done so searching but look where i am now yeah. i appreciate and i acknowledge i've got and how how is writing the book going well <laughs> i've had 30,669 words amazing so um, it is in the stages now of just proofreading, make sure everything's right, because it's not just a book. Now, people, well, I'm not even going to say people like me. Me, myself and I would not be able to sit down and read a full book. My brain would switch off because I do have a form of Adelaide ADHD as well. As you can see, I'm not sat still. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like I've got ants in my pants like the old days. Um, <laughs> So it's also going, it, my, it starts with my personal story. Then it goes into more of a self-help book. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into a journey. That I can keep everyone's brains occupied, keeping yourself motivated, giving yourself daily tasks, giving yourself motivation, giving yourself pointers, five, five year plan, because I don't want anyone to switch off with it. Mm. And, and are they things that you found helped you to have daily activities and to have a, a new- Yes, you, yeah. In, I've got my iPads now balancing on one of my journals. I must have about 17 journals now <laughs> because obviously though with brain fog, you forget where you put one book so you've got to go and buy another notebook, which is fine. But no one will ever lose my book because there'll be a proper stamp on there that they'll want to keep it to their heart. Mm. I'm, I'm just thinking how many journals I have. Probably a lot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've <laughs> Yeah. But I also, I love that it's, it's 
in with the book because I find when I was younger, I, I mean, I love books, I'll say that, but I was quite protective of them. But now I love highlighting bits that stand out to me. And if there's something that really stands out, I'll turn down the corners and they're, they're not just things that I read, they're things that I just kind of, I did that. You lived and that you understand and that you haven't actually spoken out loud about but you understand the author what they're saying yeah yeah and I think it's more of a you're really connecting with it aren't you you're just you, you know you're using it and and so if you've got your story and then the self-help bits and then the the journal people are really going to engage in it and uh hope on board like, like we were talking about before normal I'm not a normal person so my book is not going to be normal <laughs> i need it to be different from the rest you know um because i'm not doing this for me i'm doing this for everyone else i know how hard it's been and i think the the hardest part about it was admitting the truth mm. i was deluded i was in denial i used to get patted on the head you poor girl and i'm thinking why are you talking, talking to me like I'm dying? I mean, yeah, I've had meningitis. I've had, you name it, I've had everything. The best thing to ask me when I go into a consultation and say, don't ask me what I've got, ask what I haven't got. Because it's a much smaller list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on the 18th of March, um, I've got to go and see a colorectal surgeon. Which is a big dagger to my heart, to be honest, because I thought I was just going to go and see a gastroenterologist, a normal bowel surgeon. But I've never been, they've looked at my test. So now it's going to colorectal. I got my letter through yesterday and it says um, general surgery. So I don't even know whether I'm having surgery on the 18th of March yet either. But if it is the worst case scenario, I don't mind if I had to have a bag, a colonoscopy bag, because I'll jazz it up and I'll make every woman out there and every male be proud to wear that bag. Mm. It's just like having a man bag, isn't it? Or what they call a funny part, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can I say that word? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just feel I feel like um you know hearing you say that that was it almost like anything that that gets thrown at you you'll just be like I can handle this I can you've got to otherwise what's the point you may as well hand me that box of pills and say goodbye I have got a life to live we've all been put on this planet for a reason if you do not fulfill your destiny do you really want to come and relive this life to, until you do fulfill your destiny mm. and then I am doing my online course, which will be called Turn Your Pain Into Gain to Find Your Clarity and Confidence to Fulfill Your Destiny. Life isn't easy. Life isn't meant to be easy. We're here to be punished to a certain aspect. Because how can you expect everything to go so amazingly, like a Disney film? Disney's not real. Mm. We all wish it was, and it can be if we really, really imagined it. Thoughts do become things. But then we've got to face reality. And unfortunately, society has created a level of beauty that can't be obtained by being healthy. Yeah, society. Well, I want everyone to know that you're all beautiful, no matter, <laughs> regardless. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you, not a lot of people make me cry as soon as you start speaking with your, your it's a really gentle tone. <laughs> like, you understand. So I appreciate that, and I thank you for that, I do. Because not everybody, you know, people, some people can be quite abrupt, but you came in with it with a really, really gentle heart and an understanding straight away, and I could tell that with your tone of your voice. Oh, thank you. I think it's, I think for people who are, you know, trying to, trying to understand what someone's going through, it can be really difficult. It's that, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say, and people... Sometimes they do that, I know how you feel, which is like, no, you don't, because you're not me. Mm -hmm. um, Just you. All I say is be you. That's yeah. the question I want to ask. Yeah. How does it feel to feel like this? What is it like to be like this? I mean, because obviously we don't know if the video is going to be shown. If it is, guys, you can see. This is my arm straight. Mm. My palm's facing up. My arm's bent. That's my both arms. I can get the, the whole lot. I mean, ask whatever you want. Mm. and if their problem they get offended with it and if they do get offended with it it's the simple fact that they haven't acknowledged or admitted the truth anymore mm. and that's what we need to do we start accepting things themselves I, mean, I, I live with my mum and um, I've basically been a mother to my mum for the past 12 years as, as well as looking after myself my mum doesn't come out of the bedroom 
it's hard, but we also can't tell people what to do. Yeah. It pushes them away. Mm. I think sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is just to let someone know you're there for them. And if you don't know what to say, just to say, like, I don't know what to say, but... The truth, yeah. Hey, I'm here. I yeah. I want to understand, you know. And and like you said, like tell me. And and I think if you're doing it from a, a place of love and of caring, then then hopefully that is taken in that way. Um, I appreciate people so much for speaking out loud because I suffered in silence for a long time. I still do, I suppose. I still sugarcoat everything. If you don't want me to sugarcoat things, I mean, last night I had three hours sleep. That's it. I was up constantly going to the toilet. But that's my life now. And I will never give up. You, why give up? Get up. And this is why I've set up the page and everything. Because there's too many people that are suffering in silence. But I really appreciate it when people do come to me and ask for my help. Because that's the first key. Acceptance and admittance to themselves. Yeah. And I think that is, is true for whatever people are experiencing. Whether it is... Exactly something physical or emotional or just in life situation in general yeah yeah, yeah. you could have a garden you could have a puddle outside and the drainage is bad and you don't know how to deal with it no one feels the same pain that pain could be exactly the same pain that i felt when i amputated my finger because none of i have actually amputated my finger <laughs> but none of us feel the same pain nobody feels the same pain nobody so you could amputate something and someone could feel that exact pain just by bashing their elbow on the wall, you know? Because your mind is key. It's how you let your mindset process with things. Mm. I mean, mindset is one of the big things that we talk about on this podcast because it... Biggest thing. Yeah, but your mind... Your mind is the powerful part of your body. Absolutely. And, it, and it's connected to, to your body. There's that whole mind-body connection. <laughs> If you didn't have a mind, you wouldn't have a, your heart would be. It's true. Yeah, very true. So, I mean, I normally ask this question a bit later on, but as we're on, <laughs> let's we'll go off script. Why not? Can you, and I, and I think, you know, we've already been talking about this, but, and this is a hard question. People find this quite tricky. But can you sum up, can you describe your mindset? Okay. In all honesty, 18 months ago, um, well, for the past three years, I've been doing a lot of soul searching. I am proud of myself for my mindset. I actually, for once in my life, I'm proud of myself. My mindset is based on me because your heart only beats for you. So it's not a tricky question for me anymore. Your thought process becomes things. You can't let other people's words become your truth. And judging someone doesn't define who they are, it defines who you are. Mm. Because the only person that's hurting in life with your own mindset is you. Mm. Was that very easy compared to the podcast? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know how to. But yeah, I mean, that, that is so true, isn't it? That um, I quite like the saying that um, that you you can never like make anyone feel anything because we own our own feelings. So, you know, if, if someone says something and I get offended or upset, that's that's on me. That's my reaction to it. Yeah. And I can choose. And I'm not saying this is easy because people can say really horrible things that can be really hard not to take them to heart but it's probably more about them the reason they're saying it and actually i can choose whether it affects me or whether i'm just like what exactly and you can take it on board a little and see if you can change certain things and maybe understand where they were coming from when they did say that and think okay maybe i could be a little bit different in this aspect or in, in, in this situation you know mm, yeah. but it's hard life is hard we're not <laughs> life isn't easy life isn't a walk in the park you've really really got to try mm. and if you don't succeed at first you dust yourself off and you keep on trying mm. and i think it's you know it is difficult and it's hard but it's from that that you that you grow that you learn and it leads to yeah. amazing places so and that you're not living your life in a little bubble mm, yeah. because honestly that's that was my life when i was at boarding school i was in a bubble mm. and i have friends to this day that are my age 28 um and they're still in that bubble and you know it's sad mm. i mean one of the things i love about podcasting is my bubble is expanding because <laughs> sort of... oh, well, you're one of my new besties now oh awesome um and i 
<laughs> but you know, I you know, I get to talk to people like all over the world. It's yes, yeah, so interesting to me. And it's very satisfying, isn't it? Knowing that you've helped other people. Hopefully. I mean <laughs> we have because look at it this way, you you're the one, rather than a textbook therapist, you're the one that has allowed them to tell their truth and their emotion and their true beliefs and actually stop to listen to them rather than saying but how do you feel about that and how does that make you feel you're the one that sits there on the other end and listens so mm. be proud of yourself for that because in a way it is a sort of therapy mm. i'm actually hopefully uh, on that route to train to do counseling and that kind of stuff and actually you know our natural instinct sometimes as people is to ask the questions or to say oh, well, this thing about me that's related to what you just said. And actually one of the most powerful things I think in therapy or also for people telling their story is just to stay quiet and properly listen and, and have that space to talk. Because I don't know if you found this, but when you're talking to people in your everyday life, they, they're quite often, it, it gets cut off. They don't just listen because of, and actually having... If you, have a, if you had a boil on your bum, they, they've also had a boil on their bum. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there's something so, so powerful, isn't there, of just having space to talk without feeling rushed and just seeing... Without, without the judgment. Yeah, and that's... And I'm really pleased that you can kind of feel that in the podcast because that's what I'm trying to do. Well, Lu Luana and Lucy both told me, I'm sure they don't mind me mentioning their names, said that you're awesome and just to speak to you as <laughs> I am, as a, as a friend. So now, you're one of my friends now. Awesome. And I don't mind. They only have family. Once oh. you become a friend, you become a part of my family. Oh, well, I am honoured. <laughs> oh, don't be. <laughs> You're um. very great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> so. On me again. <laughs> don't be getting emotional on me again. You'll set me. No, I'm just adjusting my headset. Uh, so, um, I've got a couple of set questions I ask everyone. Uh, we've already like thrown one in, um, but I'd really love. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah to, to go through a couple more of them so um of i think the feel that i get from talking to you is that you have got such a positive outlook on life and so my question is what always boosts your mood so i'm sure there are times where you just feel a bit crap i'm pretty sure we can say that it's supposed to be a clean podcast but i think crap's okay we feel a bit... i think crap, crap's not swearing i don't yeah, think crap. Is it? yeah so you just feel a bit crap <laughs> What do you do to boost your mood? You know, what brings you joy? I have I have these um, every day, I won't lie. I know when it's coming, I need to stay quiet and give myself half an hour. And then, I don't know whether you can hear, but I always have music on. Music is the best healer in medicine, I find, mm. because a lot of people can't meditate. I can't shut off because my brain's too bad. But if you, if you listen to a song that you can really, really relate to, you're kind of meditating in a way because you're shutting off in a world and you're really, really acknowledging the powerful words that have been sung. Music is, is so amazing. Do you ever <laughs> listen to a song and then you have to go back to the start? You're like, I wasn't listening to this properly. After. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really listening to that because that was the most powerful part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. didn't sing it really more powerful. Oh, God, I could go back hundreds of times. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. I find that I have I have like a song that is like my current obsession or a couple that I have to listen to repeatedly and then fortunately then another one will come along before I get to the point of being really haven't heard it too much. You do you like My Immortal by Evanescence? Yeah. I'm very spiritual as well, I must say. Yeah. That's how I knew. Yeah. <laughs> uh so <laughs> yeah, moving on swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so this one and I we've possibly already on this one as well but uh what makes life meaningful for you truthfully helping others and i know our hearts only beat for us i know that i do but if i could put a smile on someone's face every day then that's my day made i'll go out if i go out on a night out i'd rather just sit on my boss speak to the homeless person outside and take them to hospital with the money that i had for the night out but i don't go out anymore because a lot of people don't want to go out anymore because i don't chat to <laughs> And how do you that's what I like to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel um, quite similar with the, you know, I think I was at a point um, a couple of years ago, I started the podcast, my own sort of... Still listen. I, I still listen, I've just got to stretch my legs. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Fine. No, so, so this sort of um, 
mental journey and and I realized that if I wasn't in some way helping people then I just didn't feel I don't know like I was living a meaningful life or I was sort of making the most of it so yeah but remember your life is meaningful you yourself are meaningful yeah and your heart does only beat for you and your main protector is you yeah I just want to come and meet you and give you a big cuddle to be honest <laughs> I really do <laughs> I will give, I, yeah, I would give you a cuddle. I'm, um, I'm not much of a hugger, apart from with friends, but you could have a hug. Well, well I'll jump and give you a big squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> give me a bear hug. You know, I'll give you a bear hug. <laughs> I, you know, I've got better. And actually with my friends, I do like to hug my friends, but I, I'm a bit... Can I ask you, is that because you feel uncomfortable about being shown affection? Probably. I mean, yeah, my, my turn for therapy. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I don't know. And Did I'm, uh, love? Sorry? Didn't feel that much love when you were younger that you needed? Maybe, I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> I mean... The affection that you needed. Not yeah, love. Affection. Yeah, maybe. Or um, I think maybe I'm just a bit socially awkward and just, <laughs> you know. You, I, I, you need to start loving you. Yeah. that's Because that I love you already. Just by how you've been with me. And I appreciate that so, so much. I really do. And I want you to stop looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, do you know what? You sexy MF. <laughs> you know what I mean by MF? I know. I will say I'll you on the podcast. I'm sure everyone will laugh. <laughs> and start loving you. Yeah, yeah. It's something I'm working on. But I think it's there. Because you're like me. You like to help others. Mm. But you've, you've got to help yourself as well. Well, like you said, you know, your heart, I love, I love that your heart only beats. <laughs> you have to look after yourself. And I think if as we, we get that meaning from helping other people that's great but you still you can't exactly. be the sense of yourself you still have to look after yourself or you can't be there for other people well yeah because you're just being condescending and a hypocrite and contradicting yourself you know i'm not saying that was you i'm just that, that was <laughs> <laughs> i was replying to your question <laughs> i know don't worry <laughs> just explain it for the readers because they might not be able to see <laughs> and i bet you think oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I totally like it. It's cool. No, but you, you are a gentle soul, a beautiful soul. Oh, thank you. And I appreciate that. I really do. Oh, very, it's very rare that people with chronic conditions get people like you, you know, and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I will change the way society thinks. Mm. Well, I think. You know, and I'm 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 lucky, I guess, in that physically, touch wood, I you know I haven't experienced any chronic conditions, but yeah, I, mentally, it, yeah, it's, it's just depressing. bad. Yeah, if so, not one, because yeah. you're mighty. Mental health is worse than physical health, and I think that's maybe why I can kind of, uh, in some way, maybe yeah. say, understand because of my own experience with depression and anxiety that I, I've had that kind of chronic mood-related stuff, and so yeah. But remember. We're talking about at the beginning of this of this podcast, your mindset is key. So, isn't your mental well-being more important than your physical well-being? I mean, I think they're in some ways connected, aren't they? Because if physically, but if mentally you're not there, physically you're not going to be there. Your mindset, your mentality mm. is key. Mm. And if your mental health isn't in the right place, your physical health isn't ever going to be in the right place. It kind of leads us on to the next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, what we talk about a lot on the podcast is mental wellness, as we've been mm-hmm. hinting at. So, what does mental wellness mean to you, and how do you look after your own mental well-being? By loving me. Love it. Easy. Loving me. Yeah. Because if I don't love myself, how can I expect other people to love me? How can I expect other people to listen and let me guide them if I don't allow myself to guide myself and love myself? Mm. Oh, I'm loving how quick I am with these answers today. I'm not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> You're on fire. This <laughs> <laughs> girl is on. <laughs> oh, wait, <thanks>. <laughs> You always carry it on, though, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, later, in the in the car, in the shower, I'll have a proper hand. And stuff. Well, you wanted to carry on that song, then, didn't you, really? <laughs> I did. I <laughs> did that. <laughs> Well, it's oh. it how fun this podcast has been as well. And it's still so Yeah. I'm sorry to the listeners because probably like half of it is just us giggling. <laughs> no, but I think this is what people need to hear. Mm. 
a true conversation, a true meaning, and a true impact on how you can turn your life around. Yeah. Now, honestly, whoever's listening, trust me, guys, I didn't want to be here. And I say from the bottom of my heart, I did not. I have tried numerous times. I run, I run 999 on myself. I've tried to take pills. I've tried to put my head underneath the bath for ages. I'm not afraid to admit it. But don't scream in silence. Please get in contact with me, if anything. I'd rather have sleepless nights. Oh, this gets me sad. <laughs> I'd rather have sleepless nights. I know that someone else can wake up the next morning. Because I know how... And I just want to say that I love you. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate you. <laughs> I really appreciate you and I really think it's so amazing what you're doing and and sharing so passionately your story and you you know that wanting to help people and I think that sometimes even when people share their story I think sometimes we still hold a lot back because particularly that you know certain topics and suicide is definitely one of them isn't well, it? A, a, yeah but it's, it's a topic that people don't want to talk about or they feel uncomfortable okay. and I think it's, it's because they're embarrassed but what are they embarrassed of their own thoughts never be embarrassed of your own thoughts never mm. because judging someone doesn't define who they are it defines who you are and now people say to me all the time, Alex, what are you doing? Giving our oldest person a tenner. They're just going to go and spend it on this, that, and what? If I was on the street, who knows what we'd do? Mm. If that's what makes them happy that night, that's what makes them happy that night. Mm. And I don't... Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's a whole other topic to talk about. Um, but I don't know if you've ever read anything by uh, Gabor Mate. Oh my goodness, where did you that? I actually seen um, an article the other day. Yeah. And because he talks a lot about um, addiction and a lot of people who have addiction, they've had such traumatic childhood and actually that is their way of coping. And it's the thought of, it's, it stems from abandoning from childhood, feeling abandoned, feeling unloved. I mean, I've got, I, well, not anymore. I had man issues up until 18 months ago because I had no father figure. Like major man issues. Everything stems from your childhood because we're all here through learnt and taught behaviour. And until you find yourself, that's when you're going to really be you. Otherwise, you're living off other people's words and judgment. I think it takes a, a lot of courage sometimes to be honest with yourself and accept yourself. And, and you have so much courage. You're just amazing. I never did. So you made me cry again. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. Um, you should be. I'll come in this fall. Because, <laughs> um, you know, sweet, we've got to just accept things. Doesn't make me any different. We, I haven't got a disability. Disabilities. I've got different abilities. Mm, yeah. They're all, all, everyone in the world is special in their own. We really. Yeah. Now, send me your numbers so we can have proper chat. <laughs> oh, I will. I will, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can cry properly then. <laughs> and I embarrass myself in front of 3,000 people. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so. I have another question for you. And I think that already listening to this, listeners will have got so, so much out of the, the kind of conversation. So much thing. Um, but if you, um, if you could leave listeners with between one and three strategies of things that they could do in their life that would have a massive impact, what would you suggest? So between one and three things. Your thought process changed the power of the universe. Thoughts become things. They really do. I need you all to take that deep breath in through your nose for eight counts. And when you release it, you go (sighs) very strong. I need you to not let other people's words become your truth. And I just need you to all realise that you are all beautiful, no matter what. Then you all need to look in the mirror and love you before anyone else can love you back. Thank you for those. So if, uh, I mean, we can switch numbers after this, but we won't do that in front of everyone. So if people want to connect with you online and they want to stay up to date with when the book slash journal comes out or just to keep in touch with what's happening or if they, they want to reach out because they feel particularly touched by what we've talked about, how can people connect with you? Well, every social media platform is exactly the same. It's why give up, get up. Why give up, get up. 
on Facebook is why I give up Get Up 2019. Mm -hmm. Just because for some reason I made two pages, one why I give up Get Up, one why I give up Get Up 2019, and I forgot to make them out. <laughs> 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 but they're both my pages. But why give up Get Up 2019 on Facebook and why give up Get, get Up on every other platform. And all my media, all contacts, details are on there, even telephone number, the lot. Okay. And we can put links in the show notes. So oh, of course, hundred percent, please. Do. But I just, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. One as a podcast because I think it's been great, but just also just having an opportunity to meet you and chat to you. It has been amazing. I have. I want to come through my iPad now and give you all. <laughs> well, where you know where are you based? Because I can, I've you know most of the people I've been interviewing recently have been the US and Canada, and I had. Some no, and literally just off Junction 22. That's not that far. I mean, I'm in southwest England, but we're in the same country, so that is a step. Maybe I should have told you what Junction I'm just off. Should I not? <laughs> I'm cut that bit out. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's funny. <laughs> and they're like, right, dual that. carriageway, just stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've only been to Manchester a couple of times, but it is quite a big place. So I, I think it'll be fine. I didn't You're welcome at um, my house anytime. I've got a spare room to look. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we should start the podcast first before we like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we have like all these listeners as well. Like, oh, hi. Hi, everyone. You're all welcome, everyone. No problem. <laughs> we'll, have to stay we'll have to get like a venue for us all to sleep. But we're all welcome on a night out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been out in Manchester, so it could be quite fun. Although we might just end up talking to you. To um, homeless people, which I am also fine with. Um, <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I'm fine with that. As well. We could we go to a soup kitchen and and um, volunteer or something. I think. So you know, I prefer to it to myself. Okay. I, because I know what charitable organisations gain out of it. I don't want to gain anything out of it. Just to smile. Because it is a game. But I just want them to smile. Uh, thank you so so much, and uh, it has been a real pleasure talking to you. Oh, and thank you to you too. What a lovely person you are, honestly. Thank you. Such a kind hearted soul. I really appreciate it. I do. Oh, thank you. We'll be busy soon. Don't you worry. I'll speak, I'll speak to you shortly. <laughs> <laughs>so i hope you enjoyed listening to the episode with alex sorry that we're quite giggly throughout i guess it really does just show that power of connection and even the first time that you meet someone and talk to someone you you can feel connected you can i don't know feel friendship or, or feel whatever feeling <laughs> but they can just be a really enjoyable connection. Uh, obviously, at the end, when we're planning <laughs> a night out or all of that, that, we recorded this a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not sure whether coronavirus was massively on our radar at that point, possibly in China, but definitely not in the UK. So things have changed quite a bit since we recorded it. And obviously, when we're talking about looking after yourself and nurturing yourself, yes, that's important. Obviously, at the moment, not at the risk of other people's safety and, and other people's health. So yes, look after yourself, but also be considerate of other people. And, and hopefully that came through as well, that that idea of nurturing yourself so that you can help other people as well. So obviously hold um, hold hugs and uh, nights out in Manchester are on hold at the moment, but hopefully in the future when things have calmed down, it's um, it's something that would be possible. We've also unfortunately had to cancel our face-to-face -face event that we were going to run in May. We're not sure, obviously, how long the, the current social distancing measures will be in place. So we've made the decision, unfortunately, to cancel now because we just don't know in May what the situation will be and it, and it might be that we do get to a place where we can run it we might look at doing something virtually but for the time being that has been cancelled but I just wanted to say thanks again to Alex for joining us for this episode uh, it feels like a long time ago that we had this conversation but actually as I've been editing this I've been chatting to Alex again which has been really nice to catch up and chat to her so we'll be back next week possibly with two episodes so we're going to do another two episode week to trial that again so we'll have an episode out on monday and wednesday and we'd really love to hear your feedback what you think 
about the quantity of episodes in a week, whether you would like two, whether one is enough. Um, and also, again, any ideas of what we can do to help you during this time. And if you want to share ideas with other people of things that are helping you get through this um, this whole new world, connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as Psyche Coaching. So connect with us there and we'll be back on Monday. Bye. Bye.